All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Racha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And blessings to the whole full elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, in this particular video, you know, I just wanted to focus on, you know, really focus on, you know, the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. You know, from from the time, you know, of him being in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, sweating blood to eventually being, you know, mocked, you know, and, and tortured and mocked by the wicked of our people. You know, the wicked of our people who, you know, claim that they have no king but Caesar that would rather free Barabbas than Yahweh Shai. Um, and I wanted to focus on the humiliation, you know, that Yahweh Shai went through. And, you know, what really prompted me to do this lesson was, um, you know, I was watching um, an old throwback from the apostles and the elders. You know, when he went to visit Yale University and, um, you know, Elder Apostle Kabar had made a statement on, you know, Yahweh Shai coming back to get his revenge. All right. And, um, you know, he's going to do exactly that. All right. Because the scriptures does say indeed that, um, I'm going to get Isaiah chapter 60, 63. All right. And one, and, and, and if you notice the, 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 the title, the heading, it says God's vengeance on the nations. All right. So this is Isaiah chapter 63, verse one. And this is for all you people that want to go around saying God's, you know, God loves everybody. And, you know, for all you people that believe that the Lord's name, you know, Yahweh Shai's name is, is Jesus. And that he's a so-called white man with blonde hair and blue eyes and that he's softly spoken. You know, you couldn't be further from the truth, man. You couldn't be much for, more further from the truth. All right, because the scriptures tell you, you know, what the Lord looks like in Revelation, the third, first chapter. All right, in fact, Revelation, the first chapter goes into a lot. All right, which, you know, you know, much of the core of this lesson is going to be centered around, you know, the fact that, you know, Revelation, the first chapter, you know, Dealing with Yahweh Shai and how he's coming back. You know, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read um, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom and with dyed garments from Bozrah, which represents America today? Because Bozrah was a, a capital city, all right, of the nation of Esau, Edom, okay, which spiritually today that represents America. All right. So, so it goes on to read. It says, "This that is glorious in his apparel, glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save." All right. And so Yahweh Shai is gonna come back, you know, glorious in his apparel, man. All right. Um. And this is this is balance that you know. This is what I really wanted to focus on in this lesson is, you know, the balance because Yahweh Shai was ultimately humiliated, you know, when he was crucified. Okay, but then he's gonna come back in glorious apparel. Okay, let's go into this word glorious. Um, the Hebrew word is hadar. And it says to honor, to adorn, glorify, be high. All right. And not only is Yahweh Shai gonna, gonna actually be high because he's gonna come and crack these skies, he's gonna come and crack the clouds, he's gonna be in the father's ship. You know, that's why the scripture says, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. You know, but you know, uh, uh, in terms of his status, you know, he's gonna come back. Because remember, you know. Yeah, by default, it's going to be the kingdom of Israel. But really, it's the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. Okay, remember, Yahweh Shai has been given a name. 
which is above all name now, you know? You got the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. Then you have Yahweh Shai, man. Right? He's top dog. Underneath Yahweh, he's the top dog. And we got to go through him just to get through to Yahweh. This, that's why he even said, no man come after the Father but by me. Okay? In fact, we can get that scripture as well. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get that scripture. Beautiful. This is John chapter 14, verse 6. And it says, Yahweh shall I say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we have to go through Yahweh Shai in order to get to Yahweh. You know, we have to go through the mediator, which is Yahweh Shai. He is that mediator, man. Because he, he was the only one that was worthy. You know, to, to lose the seals, you know, and to, to um, that when you read in Revelation, the fifth chapter, all right, it goes into, because, you know, ultimately the book was sealed until Yahweh Shai made that ultimate sacrifice, okay? In Revelation chapter 5 and 5, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book. And to lose the seven seals thereof. Okay. Because at one time this book was sealed. Okay. And I believe that's in uh, Daniel the 12th chapter. Speak about the book being sealed. Okay. It's been a while since I've gone into that precept. See if I can find it. Um, this is Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end. And we're in the time of the end right now, man. And this is why this truth is done bust wide open, you know, because it says many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Okay. And we're seeing that we're in a time where knowledge is being increased. That's why the Lord said in 2nd Ezra 6 and, um, damn, I'm already in there. <laughs> oh, it's the spirit. 2nd Ezra 6 and 27, his spirit is something else, man. <laughs> oh, man. Brakatiya <laughs> Bashim Dash all day, man. All right, it says, For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. All right, we're in a <laughs> we're in a time where deceit is being quenched, man. You know, let's, let's look up that word quenched. All right, let's see if we can find out where that word quenched okay, uh, quenched. Let's see what that word quenched means. All right, it says, um, to satisfy one's thirst by drinking, to extinguish. <laughs> so deceit is being extinguished, man. All right, it, 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 you know, the deceit is being put out, basically. You know, we're in a time where deceit is being quenched. And that's why you see Esau getting, you know, being revealed in these last days. All right, because remember, I remember the apostles was making that statement. At when they was at the Yale University that, you know, Jay Rockefeller, he made that statement, you know, that the internet should have never been invented. When you're dealing with, you know, the, 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 the Rockefellers, you know, you're dealing with the, you know, the elite of the nation of Esau Edom. You got the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, you know, the DuPonts, you know, the Gettys, you know, um, Luce, uh, you know and, and so on and so forth. You know, but Jay Rockefeller, he came out and said that the internet should have never been invented. Why did he say that? Because, <laughs> you know, we're in a time now where deceit is being quenched. And this reminds me of Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, man. See, Esau, man, he's 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 that fugitive and, <laughs> and a vagabond. He's on the run. You know, he's been caught red-handed. And it's fitting that saying caught red-handed because Esau, Edom, the Hebrew word for Edom is other one, which means red. When you Google Eden, man, it will tell you that East Eden means red. You know, they tell you that themselves, man. Didn't the scripture say that their tongues shall fall upon themselves? All right, so we're in a time now where evil is being put out. Esau's being revealed, you know, for the devil that he is. And the deceit is being quenched, man. But as for faith, right, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. So this is, see, no one ain't got nothing to do. You know, ain't got no business coming up against the word of the Lord because 
Ultimately, the word of the Lord reigns supreme. Okay, prophecy is boss. Okay, um, the word prophesy means to say before. So what is been written down and what's been declared in this word, it has to come. It has to come to pass because the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Remember, the scripture says in Isaiah fifty-five and eleven, "So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void." Okay. But it's a, it shall establish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So we're in a time now where faith is flourishing and corruption is being overcome. The Lord said that this would happen, man. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Okay, and this truth is definitely being declared, man. All right, knowledge is being increased. Okay, um, let me get Matthew... Uh, 24 and verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come all right and this is the time that we're in the gospel of the kingdom is being preached you know and so that's how you know that we're at the end all right so going back to daniel chapter 12 Verse 4, but, Dan, but thou, Daniel, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Okay? And that includes, you know, how this devil is being revealed. All right? So dealing with the book being sealed, we're in a time now where, you know, pretty much, you know, we know more than the prophets of old did back then. Okay? You know, like the Apostle Elder Taha always says, man. Okay, we got the 100% truth. All right, and we're living out in these last days, we're living out these prophecies, you know, especially we're waiting for the major prophecy, which is the mark of the beast, spoken of in Revelation 13 and 16, man. We're waiting for that major prophecy to pop off. Okay, and we understand what that prophecy is talking about. And we know that the mark of, mark of the beast is the chip. We know that Esau is going to, you know, pretty much you know, uh, set up these concentration camps and these chipping stations in order to fulfill his new world order agenda where he wants everyone completely, you know, electronically tagged and monitored. All right. So this is Revelation chapter five, verse five. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have, pre have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain. And who is that lamb talking about? Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah talking about? The root of David is talking about Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. That lamb is talking about Yahweh Shai. Um, this is John chapter 1, verse... Um, Verse 36, and looking upon Yahweh Shai as he walked, he saith, John the Baptist saith, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, the Lamb of God. Okay? That's Yahweh Shai, man. The Lamb is Yahweh Shai. Okay? So back in Revelation 5 and 6, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of the Most High sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. All right. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And who are the saints? The saints of the Israelites, man. Okay. Psalms 50 and 5. Psalms 148 and 14 goes into who the saints are. The saints are the Israelites. The scriptures speak about the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. So don't get this twisted, man. You know, this this is exclusively for the nation of Israel. You know, when I say this, I'm talking about this word, this truth, the Bible. OK, read Psalms 147 and 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Yahweh The saints of the Israelites, man. Verse 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Okay, for thou wast slain 
and has redeemed us to the power by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. All right, so the elect where they've been scattered, man, the Lord's going to gather his elect. And that's prophecy in um, Isaiah 11 and 11 on down. All right, and there shall be a root of, of, of Jesse, you know, loosely paraphrasing. Um, but Yahweh Shai is going to gather the outcasts of Israel, man. Okay, that's in Isaiah 11 and 11. All right, in fact, let's get it. Let's get some... Um, yeah, edification of that as well. It's Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again to the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Who were the Lord's people? Amos 3 and 1, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The Lord's people are the Israelites. That's his chosen people, man. All right which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt. So the remnant of the Lord's people are going to come out of all these different nations. Okay, because they were scattered according to the curses, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 28 and 64. No, this ain't actually talking about the other nations. It's talking about the Israelites that are scattered among them. And it's going to go on to tell you. And from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. All right. So Israel's been scattered among all these different nations. All right. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and he shall uh, assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the, together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And that lines up perfectly with Matthew chapter 24 and 30 on down. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's coming back for two things, destruction and salvation for the elect. All right, which again is balance. Okay, so Yahweh Shai, man, you know, he went through, you know, a, a, a great deal of humiliation, you know, and that's something that we have to really connect with to understand, you know, the movie that the Lord has, or the script that the Lord has, has set up here, because, um, the Lord is all about balance, man. Okay. Most humiliating punishment of Rome. All right. Yahweh Shai was crucified, you know, during the time of the Roman Empire. And it says the worst punishment in Roman law was crucifixion. This involved being nailed to a cross through your wrists and heels. Crucif crucifixion wasn't just intended to execute someone, but to cause them the maximum pain, humiliation, and disgrace. So, Yahweh Shai, you know, and remember, Yahweh Shai said he could have called down 12 legions of angels, but he didn't do that. You know, Yahweh Shai could have done that, but he didn't do it, man. You know, he, he pretty much, like a lamb, to the slaughter, he subjected himself to the will of the Heavenly Father, you know, and great and went through great humiliation and disgrace. But you see, when he comes back, you see, this is why I wanted to do this lesson, because when he comes back, he's coming back with power and great glory. All right. And this is why I was reading Isaiah 63. All right. Because when he comes back, he's coming straight for Esau. All right. Because this is the second leg of the Roman Empire. And when the Lord comes back, you ain't going to be able to crucify him like you did back then. All right, and that's why it says this is uh, is glorious and is 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 apparel, right? Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Yahweh Shai ain't gonna give no fucks when he comes back, man. Remember, the scripture says the day of the Lord burns in his heart. From there, we can go to Revelation one and seven. All right, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Right? And them clouds is talking about them so-called UFOs. When you read Revelation 19, right, and 11 on down, it speaks about the armies following Yahweh Shai upon white horses. Yahweh Shai is going to be leading the army of so-called black men, angels, all right, that are coming as a force, all right, and they're coming to really invade this place, take down Esau's kingdom, right? Move the Esau and these other nations out of the way, okay, uh, uh, the, the, you know, Bust up the wicked of our people, you know, and come and gather his elect. This is what the Lord's coming to do, man. All right. And the scriptures speak about how he's going to destroy it and devour it once. So a lot of people don't even realize 
the scriptures speak about the, when the scriptures speak about the lamentations, mourning, and woe of the scriptures. We're about to enter a time like no other since there was a nation, man. Read Daniel's twelve and one. All right. It says, and they also which pierced him. So Yahweh Shai got pierced while he was being crucified. So Yahweh Shai is definitely burning for revenge, man. Okay. And that's why I quoted the scripture that says the day of the Lord burns in his heart. Remember, the Lord said, wait, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the, the day that I rise up to the prey. Okay. Yahweh Shai is known as the conquering lion. You know, of the tribe of Judah, a lion has prey, man. A lion is a king of the jungle. And when the lion loses it, man, everyone scatters. Okay? Kind of reminds me of that speech that, um, what's his name? Christopher, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, Walker. What's his name? Christopher, um, the actor. Christopher Walken. All right? The lion. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the um, the lion speech. The lion speech lyrics. All right? Because I don't want to play the actual... Because I don't want to get a hit with a strike. But this is the actor, Christopher Walken. All right? And, and his speech. The king of the jungle speech. All right? Uh, from Pool, Pool Hall Junkies. All right? Now listen to this speech, right? This is the king of the jungle. Um, it says, you got this lion. He is the king of the jungle. Huge mane out to here. He's lying down under the tree in the middle of Africa. He's so big. He's so hot. He doesn't want to move. Now the little lion cubs, they start messing with him and biting his tail and biting his ears. He doesn't do, no, he doesn't do anything. The lioness, she starts messing with him. All right, coming over, making trouble. You know, now you can liken this to, you know, the other nations, a little, you know, biting his ears or, the, you know, a man's, you know, a foe, or a man's enemy shall become there of his own household. You know, Satan can jump on your children, your woman, the lioness, you know, because ultimately, man, you know, Satan uses things that are around us to piss us off, man. All right. But in really in this, you know, this short story here or this, this transcript, I'm using, I'm really want to go into this to represent the Lord, man. Because he's known as the conquering lion in the tribe of Judah. All right? It says the lioness, she starts messing with him. Coming over, making trouble, still nothing. Now the other animals, they notice this. Now this could be likened unto the heathens. And they start to move in. The jackals, the hyenas, they're barking at him and laughing at him. They nip his toes and eat the food that is in his domain. And what do you think that they did to the Lord when he was on the cross, man? You know, when he got crucified. Okay? They even show you in the in the Passion of Christ how the, the Roman soldiers, they were mocking the Lord. You know? They even pierced the Lord, man. The Roman soldiers pierced the Lord. You know, and they're, and they're back here to receive their judgment. All right? It says they do this and they get closer and closer, bolder and bolder, till one day the lion gets up and tears the shit out of everybody. Runs like the wind and eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. You know? And that was a um, transcript from the movie uh, Pool Hall Junkies by Christopher Walken. And I'll never forget this um, this scene, man. You know? It, it really... It's a classic, man. It's a classic uh, scene. If you, you know, ever get to watch the movie and see that scene, man. Just get into it because... You know, we, we can really liken this to Yahweh Shai, man. Because when he comes back, um, like the scriptures say, he's going to destroy it and devour. Okay. Um, was it Isaiah 42? You know, this reminds me of that scripture, man. All right. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. It says, the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yeah, roar. All right, a lion roars. Yahweh Shai is known as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, man. Okay. He shall prevail against his enemies, eating up everything in his path, right? I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. 
Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy and to devour at once, man. The day of the Lord burns in his heart, man. So we can't wait. Now I can't wait to see Yahweh Shai crack these clouds. And I, and I pray that the Lord, you know, is, is, is pleased with what I'm doing and what I've been doing and, and, and that he shows, you know, shows us mercy, you know, as we give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Because only the elect are going to be saved by Yahweh Shai when he comes back. Let's hold Matthew 24 because I don't want to lose it. All right. So let's go back to um, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and Yahweh Shai is rolling, you know, um, you know, He's rolling deep with them angels, man. He's gonna be leading that. He's gonna be leading a crew, a gang of angels, you know. Which one angel is enough to pretty much do some heavy damage, man? Destroy the earth, you know. So this is overkill right here. This is why, you know, the second death is gonna be likened unto a time like no other since there was a nation. All right, the Lord is 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 really stirring things up. Okay. Like when you're watching a movie, you you know, you want to see the main event. Or when you're watching boxing, you know, you might you might place a couple bets and you know you might place put a lot on and you might be waiting for the main event because you know you you know who's your money on? You know, you want to see who what the outcome is. But in this stance, we know the main event's gonna take place and we know who's gonna win. <laughs> you know? So our money is all on your Howard Shy, man. Okay. Because this this is you're dealing with biblical prophecy here. You know? It says, and they also which pierced him. So those that pierced him, man, Yahweh Shai is coming back for the revenge upon them. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so are man. And that word well in the Greek is kopto, which means, you know, to, to go through intense grief, to beat one's breast for grief. Alright? So Yahweh Shai ain't coming coming back to play no games, man. You know? So again, you know, the Lord, he know, he went through, you know, the most excru excruciating pain. You know, he was humiliated. You know, uh, they, they scoffed and they, you know, they mocked the Lord. And the most humiliating punishment of Rome was crucifixion, man. So, you know, him going through... Yahweh Shai going through the most humiliated humiliation punishment during the time of the Roman Empire is fitting that you know he he is glorified. Okay, and he comes back with power and great glory that we're about to read in Matthew 24 and 30. It says, And then shall the son of sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall appear, excuse me, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, which is Yahweh Shai. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with power and great glory, man. Okay, great glory. Okay, he went through the most humiliation, humiliation, or at the most humiliation punishment during the time of the Roman Empire. And guess what? He's coming back in great glory, man. In this time. All right, with power. And remember, the scripture said that he's not going to meet Esau as a man. And he shall send his angels, verse 31, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All right, and that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to gather his elect, the elect of the nation of Israel, no other nation. Read Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel, you know, for he had visited and redeemed his people. Who are the Lord's people? The Israelites. No other nation. Alright, so let's not get that twisted, man. Alright, so when the Lord comes back. And, you know, Esau knows, man. They even put it in the Zondervans. You know, when you go into the definition of Edom, it speaks about the scene of great future judgments. And they even reference Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, which is what we read. Who is this that coming from Eden with dyed garments from Bosra? So if they don't know what's going to happen to them, then why did they put it? Why did they put that as a precept for the definition of Eden in the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary? Come on, bro. Esau's through. He's done. And that's why he's moving with great wrath because he knows that he have but a short time, man. 
Okay? Remember, they're going to try and fight against the Lord when he comes back. Uh, second Ezra, uh, the 13th chapter, says that they were afraid and yet durst fight, man. All right? But the point, I, you know, that's another lesson for another time. But the point I really want to focus on was Yahweh Shai, he went through the most. He went through the maximum pain. Remember, the scripture says that his visage was marred more than any man. And we can close out in Isaiah 53. You know, he went through the most maximum humiliation and pain. Okay, but then he's going to come back with the most, you know, the most glory and power. All right, and that's balance. Remember, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, man. Yahweh Shai, right? This is Isaiah 53 and 3. He is, a, he is despised and rejected of men. Yeah, humiliation. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Right? But when he comes back, he's going to be full of power and glory, man. And great glory. He ain't going to be, you know? Come on, man. <laughs> he says, we, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. You think that Yahweh Shai is going to be despised? When he comes back by his elect? No. We're going to be... Man, we, we, he's not despised now by his elect. Could you imagine when he, you know, he comes, you know, and saves, and he saves his elect? You know, when all hell is breaking loose, and the only way for the elect to be protected is for Yahweh Shai to take them off the earth. Yahweh Shai is going to be glorified, man. Daddy, the scripture says that at the, at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Yahweh Shai is going to get that respect, man. When he the, the way that he comes back, you know, the, these, these people, they're going to learn to, to, to know, to fear and respect Yahweh Shai. And I did a lesson on that yesterday, man. Okay? Just like Rahab the harlot, man, she knew to, to, to fear the Lord, you know? Them he even knew. When the, when the Lord jacked them, them, Egypt, them Egyptians, hey, the word got out. There were no one to fuck with us as a nation, man. Do you know who our power is? All right? And, and just, just like then, but this, this salvation is going to be even greater than the salvation out of Egypt, man. So can you, only, you can only imagine the, 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 uh, the magnitude of the glory and the splendor that Yahweh Shai is going to come in. Remember, the scriptures speak about the strangeness of our salvation. Okay. It says, <clears throat> and we hid our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken and smitten of Yahweh and afflicted. And that's, that's why, you know, he was put through so much pain, humiliation, and disgrace, man. You know, because he carried the weight of the sins of the nation upon his shoulders, man. And you still got people out there that don't want to worship Yahweh Shai. Oh, well, you know what, man? Hey, the scripture says, kiss the son, lest he be angry with thee. And believe me, when we don't believe, believe the scriptures, you, you don't want to be, you don't want the Lord to be angry with you when he comes back. Okay, because that maximum pain, humiliation and disgrace that he went through. You know, Yahweh Shai is pretty much gonna unleash that. You know, when he cracks these, when he cracks these clouds, man. Remember, the same way that he went is the same way that he's coming back. All right. So with that, man, you know, I, I pray you were edified with this lesson. Um, you know, a, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Maximum pain, humiliation, and disgrace that the Lord went through. So what do you think he's coming back with? Power and great glory. All right, and he's going to, you know, direct his anger, you know, toward the wicked of our people, Esau, these other nations. They're going to get it, man. So with that, you know, I pray you were edified. Shalom.